Recently, I posted a poll in the channel's community tab asking what woody invasive species is the most troublesome on your property. Congratulations to the bush honeysuckles for winning and becoming the worst of the worst. Today, I'm gonna to cover some of the misguided ideas people have about invasive species such as bush honeysuckle, go through the reasons why it is such a bad thing for our native habitats, and then I'm gonna go through some native alternatives to bush honeysuckles towards the end of the video, so be sure to stick around for that. While most people realize that these invasive species are horrible for our North American ecosystems, there's a lot of misinformation out there about species like exotic bush honeysuckles. Some are even promoting it. Perhaps you have heard something like this about exotic bush honeysuckle. Don't deer browse non-native honeysuckles? And doesn't it provide good cover for them? Deer might browse invasive bush honeysuckle, and it does grow very thick but there are literally hundreds of native species that do the exact same thing. Or maybe this. Don't honeybees use invasive honeysuckles? And aren't they an important nectar source for them? Honeybees do use some species of invasive honeysuckles as a source of nectar, but there are tons of native plants that would do the exact same thing, especially in areas where bush honeysuckles have taken over and are the only thing available. That's the reason it's a major nectar source in some areas. It's all there is. Or possibly this. Don't birds use invasive honeysuckle berries as a late fall and winter food source? Birds do eat the berries of invasive honeysuckles, which creates two problems. First, it helps spread invasive honeysuckles to new areas. And second, they are an inferior food source compared to the berries of native shrubs. And finally, this. Well, exotic bush honeysuckles are easy to propagate, hardy, and grow in a wide range of conditions. They make the perfect nursery stock. All of those are true, and are the reasons why exotic bush honeysuckles are so invasive, and are no reason to keep producing them and causing impacts to our natural ecosystems. Disclaimer time. Before I get a ton of hate mail, just let me say, I hunt deer, keep bees, bird watch, and co-own a nursery. So I am directly involved in every group I just represented. Don't get me wrong, not everyone in these groups thinks the way that I portrayed. In fact, most of them don't. But there's plenty of people out there that are still portraying bush honeysuckles as a good thing. They are not good. In our native environments, they are bad, plain and simple. And anybody that is propagating them, encouraging their use, or not getting rid of them, or trying to eradicate them, just makes it that much harder on those of us who are trying to rid our land of this non-native scourge. But why are non-native honeysuckles so bad? Even though some critters do use them, the negative effects of invasive bush honeysuckles on the environment far exceed any perceived good they might do. First and foremost, invasive bush honeysuckles can form an understory monoculture in wooded areas. This is partially because they are allopathic meaning that they exude chemicals which inhibit the germination of seeds of other species. Since our native species did not evolve with these invasive species, they have zero tolerance to these allopathic chemicals and are totally kept from reproducing. Another trait that allows them to outcompete our native plants is that they have extremely early leaf out in the spring and extremely late leaf drop in the fall. In some areas, invasive honeysuckles stay green almost all year. This gives them a huge advantage in nutrient buildup and accelerated growth when the warmer season comes over our native plants. Monocultures of any species, even natives, are bad as they lack diversity, which is a major indicator of a healthy plant community. Monocultures of invasive species that produce very low quality berries are even worse for two reasons. One, the native plants are getting outcompeted, and two, the birds and other critters are left with no other choice but to eat the low quality berries that the bush honeysuckles are providing. What makes the berries of invasive honeysuckles such low quality is they don't have the fat content that the berries of native shrubs do. This is a problem for migratory species because they need those high fat foods in order to fuel their flight south. And the birds that stay for the winter need them in order to have a high fat source so they can stay warm and survive the cold temps. These are the things we can easily see as we walk through the woods. Monocultures of invasive honeysuckles and birds eating their berries. 
but the effects to the ecosystem of invasive honeysuckles go far deeper than that. Recent studies have shown that amphibian larvae, you know, tadpoles and larval salamanders or Fs, that develop in pools where non-native bush honeysuckle leaves have fallen, have a significantly higher mortality and tend to exhibit behaviors that make them more prone to predation. The exact mechanism by which this occurs has not yet been found, but studies have shown that it is probably a phytochemical or complex of phytochemicals that are produced in the leaves of invasive honeysuckles that are released into the water when the leaves fall into a pool or a, a pond and start to break down. These phytochemicals appear to affect the respiration of the tadpoles or the salamander larva and either kill them outright or cause them to surface more frequently to gulp for air, increasing their uh, predation risk as if amphibians didn't have enough going against them these days. In addition, these phytochemicals from the leaves appear to have an adverse effect on macroinvertebrates, things like insects and their larvae and crustaceans in these same aquatic ecosystems. Studies have shown that the leaves of these invasive honeysuckles break down up to five times faster when they enter a aquatic system, which just speeds up the rate at which the phytochemicals are leached from them and enter the waterways. I could go on, but I think you get the picture. Invasive bush honeysuckle has an impact that goes far beyond what can easily be seen. Removing them from your land is the best thing you can possibly do for the critters that live there. And also it'll encourage native plant communities to grow. Some good native alternatives to exotic bush honeysuckles if you like the look of the red berries are spice bush, the native hollies, red chokeberry, and high bush cranberry are all good options. If berry color doesn't matter than any of the other, native viburnums would make great choices along with black chokeberry and American beautyberry. Although they do not have showy berries, the native bush honeysuckles in the genus Deiravilla are an excellent alternative to the exotic species. Just be sure to choose species that are native to your area. And remember, if you have room for more than one species, all the better. Diversity is great. I'm sure many of you are wondering, how do you get rid of this invasive species? But that is a subject for another video. In the meantime, if you wanna see how easy some of these species are to spot in the winter, check out this video and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.